r slash r's credit, serious, what's the creepiest, scariest thing that you've seen but no one believes you? I was a missionary in South Africa. One of the creepiest things that happened to me, was on New Year's Eve. During that night, I woke up feeling really thirsty. I walked toward the refrigerator in the kitchen, and as I was drinking water, I turned around and the front door was wide open. I could see the stars in the black sky and hear the faint sound of crickets in the distance. Not thinking anything of it, I closed it and went back to bed. In the morning, my missionary companion woke up first and noticed the door was wide open. It was then that we realized we had been robbed throughout the night, and I still remember my heart dropping as I realized the perpetrators were most likely in the dark house while I was in the kitchen in the middle of the night. Still gives me goosebumps thinking about it. Was working at a convenience store, late shift, just about nobody comes in from about 10.45 until we close at midnight. The way the store is set up is, from behind the counter I'm about 6 feet from the door in front of me and to my left, and directly above it are two security monitors. It's a very small store. The monitors flip through a few different camera angles, in the back, just outside the front door, in the lot in the shed, by the coolers, and then repeat the cycle again. I'm working by myself, just me and my phone. 11 hits. Nobody comes in for a while, probably 20 minutes of silence. Some time passes and I glance at the security monitor, it's showing the angle of the lot, and it shows in such a way that you could see someone's back as they enter the front door, and it's pretty dark out so the best way to see if a customer's coming is to watch the cameras. It's at a slight delay, so I would see something happen on the monitors a second or two after it actually happened. When the angle from the lot comes back on, I see a man, from behind, enter the front door. Black guy, not too tall, letter jacket. He's got a grocery bag in his right hand. I glance down at the front door, which is just below the monitors. Nobody's there. I thought it was a glitch, maybe an old tape replaying. I watch through another cycle of the camera angles which lasts about 45 seconds or so, just to see if it would happen again. Halfway through the cycle, the door swings open and into the store steps a young man, black guy, not too tall, wearing a letter jacket. He's holding a grocery bag in his right hand. The icing on the cake was that he didn't buy anything, he just looked around for a minute and left. Mind playing tricks on me I guess, but I was spooked out of my mind. Didn't work any more nights after that. DLDR, saw something happen on the security monitors about a minute before it actually happened. It was over 10 years ago now when a friend and I visited Japan. It was our first time there so we went with a tour company. However after the tour ended we stayed an extra night in a hotel in East Ikebukuro. During the tour tour leader tell us stories of haunted hotels and other urban myths, as you do over beers or when you're enjoying a late night onsen. One of the things he'd tell us was to be wary if you find a room where the head of the bed was positioned next to the window, so if you look up while lying in bed you look out the window. He'd try to scare us by saying in those rooms ghosts would come through the window at night and drag you out to your death. Back to the East Ikebukuro Hotel, we check in in the early evening and the first thing we notice is how small the room was. The second thing was they gave us a double bed instead of twin singles. The third, the bed head was right next to the window. We rationalized that the room was too small really to align the bed any other way and the tour leader was full of shit. To be honest we were more annoyed that we had to share a double bed, no homo. We decide to just let it go since it was just for one night. So we went out for dinner before turning in for the night. That night I get woken up by a door slamming shut and I jolt up. There, sitting at the foot of the bed, is a woman in a blue kimono. She had long hair and from what could make out, 
Her kimono had butterflies on it. I freak out, dive and bury my head under my pillow, looking back, that was a useless move if anything bad were to happen. I remember thinking, is this real? How can I check without looking? In my genius I decided to shuffle my foot down the bed thinking if I don't touch anything it's just my imagination. I didn't think about what I'd do if I did touch something. Little by little my foot moves down the bed when I notice that there is definitely a depression at the foot of the bed. Someone think? Was there? I retreat my foot, start to sweat and at this point just start repeatedly saying the Lord's Prayer till I must have fainted or fallen back asleep. I remember waking up at 6 the next morning and my friend was already dressed and packed. I asked him if he saw or heard anything last night and all he says is I don't want to talk about it. Let's check out. It was the night before my stepmom died, lost her battle to cancer. I was 22, was spending the night in bed with my 9 year old half brother, cuddling him and telling him his mom was gonna be okay, it wasn't gonna hurt anymore. It's about 3 am at the time, and after a while he immediately sits upright in bed, smiles, says I promise to be a good boy, mommy. I love you. Now my stepmom has been bedridden for the last month, so she's not moving anywhere. But I swear on my life, and my little brother agrees with me, for a split second I saw her standing in the doorway wearing her big giant fur coat, just smiling at us and just looking relieved. Brother went to sleep about two minutes later. I left to go into my dad and stepmom's room to check on her to see my dad awake and telling me she died about half an hour ago. I genuinely believe she stopped by on her way to the other side to check in on her two kids and make sure we'd be okay without her before she left. I was working in Lagos, Nigeria, sitting in the bar on one of the lagoons near Lekki when a body washed up naked except for underwear. I called the waitress over a bit frantically and pointed at the body. She pulled a face and went back into the bar where I was expecting that she would call the police but no. She returned with a long stick with a nail on the end, stabbed into his ass and pushed him out like they must have done in the past as they had made a tool for it. I've told this story a few times to friends. It never ceases to give me goosebumps. My sophomore year of high school my girlfriend were headed to the school dance. We lived in a small Texas town, for reference my graduating class was 120. She had picked me up, I was 15 at the time so still not driving, and we had gotten dinner. The meal went by faster than we had expected so we had about an hour to kill. We were driving on the back roads that were near her house and she told me she had found the perfect makeout spot. So of course at the time my hormonal brain didn't think about just how illegal or dangerous it was to trespass in the middle of butt truck Egypt. We pulled into a driveway, or what used to be one. The road was gravel for about 40 feet and then turned to dirt. The dirt road was extremely overgrown with grass and appeared to have not been used in years. There was a field to the left of us and a densely wooded area to the right. Three large gravel piles were between us and the woods. When she pulled in she pulled the car around to face the exit. Such a trivial thing yet it made all the difference. She shut the car off and we hopped into the back seat quickly getting down to business. About an hour goes by and we're about ready to hit the road. While we're getting dressed she looks at me and says I really have to pee. At this point my hormones are under control and realize just how sketchy this place is. It's pitch black, the car is off, and all of our doors are unlocked. Right now? We're in the middle of nowhere. She was a stubborn girl, which might have had something to do with why we're not together anymore. I see her reaching for the door handle. I've had a few cinematic moments in my life, but the way that she reached for the door is something I'll never forget. Her hand moved so slowly it was as if she was waiting for something to happen. Just as her fingertips touched the handle, a crisp knocking noise comes from the back of the car. 
It was most certainly the sound of knuckles taping against the top of the trunk. Keep in mind there and no trees or anything that could have been making this noise on the car. It was a perfect rhythm of knuckles on metal for about 10 seconds. Me and my girlfriend sat dead still holding on to each other, neither of us even breathing. After the longest 10 seconds of my life, the knocking stops. Dead silent. I attempted to look out the window to see if I could see anyone or anything but shit I could hardly even see my girlfriend's face right in front of mine. What the f was that she asked me? I don't know, start the car. My hands were trembling. And I could hear the fear in my own voice. Babe please start the car I asked again. I can't move she replied. The second she was quiet the knocking started again, the same rhythmic beating that I can still remember perfectly. I had had enough. In the course of the next three seconds I was able to jump in the front seat, start the car, lock the doors, turn on the headlights, and put my seatbelt on because safety first. I floored that Toyota Corolla like I was an effing NASCO driver. I hit about 50 on the turn out of that driveway spewing gravel on whatever was behind me. I drove like a madman for about two miles down the road and stopped at an electric plant down the road. My girlfriend got out to use the bathroom and I sat in the front seat, my whole still body shaking. I got dressed and we drove the rest of the way in silence. That was the first time I had driven a car outside of a parking lot. Once we got to the dance we sat in the corner, funnily I have no idea what we even said to each other about it. I just knew that I was never going back to that place. Or so I thought. Near the end of the dance one of my best friends came up to me and I explained to her what had happened. We've got to go back. I couldn't believe my ears. After all that and this girl wants to go check it out. The next day around noon she came and picked me up. We went back to the spot and if she didn't believe me the night before, she definitely did now. I got a good look at the spot, just as I remembered it the night before, but now I could really see just how secluded it really was. There was no houses or buildings within sight of this place. Where the driveway once went was certainly not there anymore. I walked up to where the tire marks were from the night before, still fresh in the gravel. I grimaced as I noticed boot prints leading up to the back of the marks. Two prints side by side, right behind the back left tire. The prints came and returned to the overgrown brush. My friend could tell I was pretty uncomfortable so we decided to head out. A couple months went by and me and my girlfriend broke up over unrelated matters. We attend different colleges now, but sometimes she will come and visit some high school friends that attend my school. I saw her last semester. We caught up for a while, just about life and all that good stuff. During a lull in the conversation I asked do you ever think about that time? She put her hand up, smile gone from her face. I don't think about it. Ever. And I don't want to. And that was the end of that. It's not that people don't believe me, it's more that I hardly believe it myself. It was late probably between 1 and 3 am and I was sitting at an intersection waiting for the light to go green. Across from me was a dark road with trees on either side and thick woods off to the left and houses off to the right. So I'm sitting there listening to music when I see something move at the edge of the woods to the left. Now this is rural New Jersey so things moving in the woods are either bears or deer which aren't scary but deer will fuck your car up if run out in front of you. I turned my high beams on to see what it was but they didn't reach the woods. Then I saw more movement before the light turned green. I made my left turn and drove off but I couldn't see what it was. The next day I drive the same route on my way to work and when I get to that intersection there's cops and ambulance over at the edge of the woods where I saw the movement the night before. I asked a co-worker what happened and he said they had found dismembered body parts there early that morning. T.L.D.R. I either saw a murderer, a bear, or the Jersey Devil kill and dismember someone. 
was out camping near Crater Lake or alone. Trekked in about 10 miles from the trail with very light gear and made camp on a ridge overlooking this valley. Wake up in the middle of the night to shouting in the distance. Look down in the valley and see two flashlights moving in one direction. I figure it's some camper's night hiking or playing a game. So I just observe. It becomes apparent they are looking for someone. I can barely hear them but once in a while they shout out something like we will find you or come out I can't remember exactly but it was like they were toying with someone. Hide and go seek? That's what I'm thinking. Weird but whatever. Eventually I see both lights turn suddenly and bolt in one direction. From what I can make out they found who they were looking for. Again I can't see much except for the flashlight beams. The two flashlight people are laughing maniacally now and it's creepy. Then I hear a loud woman's scream and the movement of the lights stops in one spot and she continues to scream. It then sounds like she's being beaten and raped. I have no clue what to do. I'm unarmed and quite far from them. So I pack up camp and decide to head to the ranger's station. No cell service. It's rough terrain at night and I'm off trail with no GPS and while I have great sense of direction normally, at night I can't see my landmarks. So to be safe I stop and decide to wait for sun up. Hardly sleep and as the sun comes up I figure out where I am and continue back to my car and the ranger's station. I finally arrive exhausted but the station is closed. I find the number to the park service and make a report. They thanked me and said they would send out search and rescue. I follow the news the next couple days but don't hear anything and I'm extremely curious. So I call back the parks service and ask to speak to the same guy I filed the report with. Apparently they found the people almost immediately, all camped out together. After some questioning it comes out that they, two men and one woman, were playing a sex game rape fantasy in the woods. It was a relief to learn that no one was harmed but holy f it freaked me out. When I was 16 I skipped school to stay home and play video games. I set up my playstation and made some hot pockets and right when I get good and comfortable I hear footsteps walking to my room. I glance outside and see my parents aren't home yet but was still afraid I was going to get caught. Seeing no place to hide I froze. Suddenly the door was flung open and I heard a blood curdling scream echo through the house. I must have sat the petrified in that room for half an hour before going outside and waiting for my parents to come home. I tried to explain to my friends later what happened but they thought I was just pulling some bull from the internet. was walking through the Rockies and managed to tear the muscle on the side of my foot so was hobbling back. I was on my own like a moron. In the space of hobbling back to Jasper I saw a white bear. Think they are called spirit bears? Just sitting watching me. Literally thought f sake I'm gonna die here mauled by a bear and no one knows where I am. But it just sat there and poured the dirt in the direction of the town. I limped on keeping an eye on it and it just watched me. Then I swear to god no more than 5 minutes later a effing wolf appears limping exactly on the same foot I'm limping on, eyes me up and continues on its journey. I think I was even too pathetic to bother with is the moral of that story? I was petrified though either way. When I was a teenager I used to keep the remote to my stereo on the lip of my bed frame. One night around midnight I woke up to my stereo playing static at me. Only it was getting louder. I could see the volume number moving higher and higher. So it's pitch black and this static is getting louder and louder and the remote wasn't in its usual place for some reason. I had no choice but to jump out of bed to turn it off. I turned on the light and freaking out, found it. Under my bed. Like, deep under my bed at that middle point that's super hard to reach. Did not like. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. If you were at all entertained, 
please consider giving this video a like and subscribing for future content. Stay safe everyone, until next time.